Hey everyone, it's General Hand Grenade here. How are you doing? So today I'm going to be working on these things here. I'm going to be working on some nukes. I was going to make a video for Global War 2025 on the nukes and I thought, you know what? <laughs> Why don't I do it while I'm painting up some nukes instead of doing it over the board? You've seen the board a number of times already in my videos and in other videos. So why don't I just try to show you um, what what uh, I'm going to do. So you know, like you take a look at here, and I, I have a couple of them already. I just had 10 more of them sent to me. But here's, here's one. And um, I was pretty happy with the way the bottom of it turned out. Like where the, where the blast actually is down there. But I wasn't entirely happy with the way the top turned out. You see how it's just multicolored in there. Like I googled pictures of, of uh, mushroom clouds and nuclear explosions and everything for a while. And th there was pictures that looked exactly like this. So I thought I'd try it. But I just, I think that there's too many colors going on there. It's too busy. I think I might just put another layer of white over top of that just to make the colors not so prominent. And then on the new ones, I'll do the bottom like I did. I don't know how well you can see it because of the light, but um, let me just stop moving there. Let's so look, you can see it's um, it's like a, an orangish red color, um, but there's also yellow highlights in it. Um, so that's what I want. Like I don't want a solid color, right? I want, uh, I want it to be a little, um messy you know um because an, a, a, an explosion of any kind isn't one solid color is it uh and so also i don't want it to be pure red like you can see this thing here this uh we're going to mix up some more paint in here if i can remember how i did it. this was a couple of weeks ago that i did those other ones anyway we'll uh we'll see what we can do that's why i kept that one though so i could try to get the same color again because i do like the way that color turned out before we do that, let's just take a look at some of the other things that I'm working on here. Uh, so these things here are the Opal Blitz. Those are the ones that are covered uh, with the, the back on them. These are really nice. These are 3D printed from HBG. I just need to put the decals on and then spray them with the top coat. Now these are also Opal Blitz, but these are open back ones. Uh, same, same truck, just doesn't have the covered back, right? And you can also get them where it's like this one here, but there's barrels in the back, or you can get them uh, where they're open back like that and they're tracked instead of wheels. So you could use those me for mechanized infantry if you wanted. And what else do we got here? We got some more of the fighter jets from 2025. Um, I'm working on some of these. Uh, um, I I'm using them for, um, for airborne here let me show you what i did so from hpg i bought this thing here it's uh modern u.s soldiers and there's all kinds of different poses and everything in there like here i'll show you the back of the box right so um this is kind of a generic game as far as pieces go right like it's not uh every every nation doesn't have exactly its own pieces and stuff so i thought why not just use american soldiers and then I could uh, paint them in the different colors. Like that's a Pacific one, right? And here's a, here's the Chinese color, you know? Because they're so small anyway. I mean, you can't tell what the guy is anyway, right? A modern soldier is a modern soldier, right? And this is what they look like afterwards. So I, I put them on these chips. Now, normally you just get 10 of these chips with the game. and But I bought more chips because... Um, if you're going to glue them on like I have here, then uh, then you're going to need more because, you know, it's not like you, you can use seven of them, of them for the Americans uh, because they're a beast that game and then three of them for everybody else, right? Like you're going to need more, uh, at least twice as many chips. Um, after these ones are done, I'll have 25 chips instead of 10. And that way, then you just don't know who's going to... Um, be the beast that game, but you have you have it covered anyway, right? Um, the th the other thing is like these these soldiers would not be very good for uh, just playing like without the chips. If you're not going to glue them down on the chips, you see how small that base is on that guy. Like that's very small. Um, that's about as wide as 
the round chips are. But you can see that now it's narrow, like it's rectangular this way, right? So that guy will fall over, like these guys here. Uh, they just uh, you just breathe on them and they just fall over, right? They wouldn't be much good for playing the game, but they're perfect for putting on chips because if you have a, a bigger base, and I've got lots of custom infantry, right? If you've got a bigger base, then it covers covers up all the words on your chip, right? So this one, uh, these one, all of these guys have a small base, and so you can still read that it's an airborne infantry, right? And I like that. I think that's perfect if you're going to be gluing some infantry onto chips so that they have a small base. So what else do we got here? There's those uh, ships there. Here, like the, you get this. This is uh, the disrupted convoy things. So I've just painted these so far. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what else I'm gonna do. I might just paint them with the markings of a troop transport. Uh, like I normally paint my troop transports. I paint them with white markings, right? Um, and then just make the chip generic. Like I don't think I need to make it for all the different nations. Um, it's mostly just the British that use them. If I was going to do that, then I would paint most of them British and then have one or two American and French and, and uh, Japanese and German and maybe one Italian. That would be it. But most of them would still be British anyway. So I got those going on. And in the back there, I've got, uh, I've got some Halifax and some Lancaster bombers. Uh, those are going to be new. Uh, I got some helicopters over here. I got some, uh, what are these? Oh, zeros. Some 3D printed zeros. Uh, I like those. Anyway, those, uh, I got, so I just painted these yesterday and then I've got to put the markings on them and then I've got to put the decals on them. So that, and what else do I got over there? I think that's about it. I've got some stuff over here though. Like, here, let me show you what I'm using here. Like they've got um, ballistic submarines that you can buy, 3D printed ones for the 2025 game. But these are just the plastic ones. They've been selling these for years, right? Um, and and uh, I kind of like these ones because they're unique. Uh, the, the sculpture is unique, right? Uh, you, you're not going to mistake it for this one. Like, this is one of the attack submarines in the game, right? Whereas the ballistic submarines, the 3D printed ones, are similar to those ones, the, the one that I just showed you there. And I did not want to paint the tips of my ships in this game because there's not many of them. Like in 36 and in 14, there's lots of different ships, lots of different planes. And so it's helpful to paint the tips of them. And... Um, this game here, the only things that would be similar is the, the two submarines. And so if I got a unique sculpt for the submarines, then for the ballistic submarines, then I wouldn't have to worry about it, right? And so I just got the this one submarine and painted it in the different colors. And there's only the Americans and NATO uh, and uh, I guess Pacific has one. And then the Russians have two or three, and then the Chinese have two. So you don't need very many ballistic submarines. Um, and you don't even need them at all, to be honest with you. Like you've got chips that they give you for the game. I just wanted the sculpts, right? So anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, but uh, uh, let me just pause this for a second and I can set up the camera and we can start painting some of those, um, some of those mushroom gloves. All right now. If I remember correctly, uh, I think I used some of this orange here. So we're gonna get the stuff for the actual flame, the blast, right? So I've already shook this up a bit. So let's just pour a little bit of that in there. We don't need very much. A little bit came off there. And then we've got some of this red here. This is actually the first time I've ever tried uh, um, this uh, when I did this originally. It's the first time I've ever tried blending paints. paints. Um, just trying to expand my artistic <laughs> goings on, right? Um, it's all about trial and error, isn't it? 
See, what, what I really wanted to do, I didn't want to make the red quite so striking, right? So, taking a look here, looks like I need to be a little bit lighter even. That's a little bit too red. So let's try a little bit more of this. <laughs> the little stir stick that I'm using here, that's just uh, some kind of makeup applicator. I can't tell you what it's for, probably eyebrows or something. <laughs> I'm not really uh, up on the uh, makeup applicator types, but uh, it's a lot cheaper than buying hobby tools, right? <laughs> here, let's try, hmm, what do you think about that? That looks pretty good. Um, yeah, hmm, let's try a little bit of white too. I'm a mad scientist here. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look exactly like the other ones, right? Maybe we'll like this one more. We'll just use a dab of white. Come on, get off of there. Stupid thing. in there so that lightened it right up all right I like that I like that better okay so instead of just wasting this stuff on here let's use this get all this stuff off of here so we can still use it Again, this is all just trial and error, right? There may be a lot easier ways to do this. I don't know. I'm just having fun. And you are my captive audience that can leave anytime you want. Anyway, um, hmm. Just wondering if there's, I can use this for anything. I don't think so. You know what I could do? I could put some in here like this. Just to try not to waste it. Look at that. It's working. Hey, that worked. I don't mind getting a uh, like spelling over the lines because that's actually going to be. Look at that. That worked out pretty good. Huh. Let's do that again. Kind of sped up the process. And less waste on the paint, right? Let's see if I can get one more in there. Yeah, not much came out of that one. There we go. So we can begin. Now, there's too much paint on this one. Like, you don't want to have too much paint on your brush. So let's wipe it off and start over again. There we go. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to paint the insides of this thing all around. And I don't care about how neat it is. Like I said, I want it to look a little chaotic, right? So just jamming it in there. Basically what I really want to do is just cover it all, right? I am going to put other stuff over top of this. So I don't care if I spill out over the lines or that it looks good. I want it to look chaotic. What I'll probably do, like I did with the other one there, is put a little bit of dab dabs of yellow here and there. Because like when you see an explosion, there's kind of that, um, the flash of the explosion. And it's, it's, not, it's not quite white, it's more of a yellowish, right? So, that's where the yellow comes from. But there's just no, no rhyme or reason. It's just a matter of just doing it. The, the uh, hard part will be doing the mushroom cloud to try to get that just right. 
because it's hard to make a, a round ball look like look like sm smoke, right? Or whatever you call that. I guess it would be smoke, wouldn't it? There we go. That was actually that actually made it pretty quick by using that other thing there. The other ones took me quite a while to do. So this one was a lot lighter because a lot of that stuff was off. You know what? I bet you it'd be a lot. It'd be worth it for me just to actually use that thing to paint these for first and to fill in the blanks like I was. So I'll just do two of these and show you what I'm looking at here because you don't need to be around for the whole process, right? And then start up the camera again when it's time to do some more because I can't, it's not like I can paint the yellow on right now, right? Like the red is still wet. So you gotta wait for that to dry. And that's why, um, you know, like while I'm painting 10 of them, then the red will dry, right? And I can start again on the first one. I guess I could talk about the rules uh, regarding the the nukes in 2025. It's actually really interesting. Like, uh, I uh, when I played the game in Tulsa a few years ago, um, I thought, you know, this is cool and all, but, you know, like, it, uh, um, there was one guy there that all he wanted to do was just drop nukes. And it didn't matter to him that you lose a point if you drop a nuke. He didn't care. He didn't care about winning or losing. He just wanted to drop nukes, right? And it kind of ruined the game for everybody. And so I thought, you know, that's uh, that's something they really got to think about. And we've probably all given that a little, little bit of thought because a nuke seems overpowered in a board game where you've got all these pieces, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if all you got to do is drop a nuke to kill everybody, then what's the point, right? Um, anyway, so, um, the, they've kind of changed now. So you do lose that point, uh, if you drop a nuke, right? But, uh, like you lo lose a point per turn. So you could drop one nuclear weapon or you could drop 10 of them. It doesn't matter. You're only going to lose one point, right? Um, but the, the difference is now that, uh, depending on how many nukes you fire, that's how many nukes the other side gets to use against you for free on their next turn. So, and there's no reason for them not to use them. They've got them, you know, they, they might as well shoot them at you. Even if they're sitting in a territory that got nuked, you can still use your nukes. So there's absolutely no reason for you not to use your nukes. Uh, but you can only use the same amount. Like if they fired three nukes at you, you can fire three nukes at them and it doesn't cost you a point. Um, and if you, uh, like if they fire three nukes against you and you fire five against them, well, now you owe them too, right? So you, you, uh, the person that fired the five nukes, now they're going to lose a point because they fired two extra, right? And, um, and then the other guys will get to fire two nukes for free on their next turn because you went two over, over and above what you could do for free so that that's kind of interesting like there it it um it makes sense right like if somebody uses nuclear weapon, the reason that we haven't had nuclear war is because of the reprisals right like sure you know we don't care if we destroy let's say moscow you know just because it's on the opposite wor of the world from where i am who cares about that right well you would care if moscow was going to shoot nukes back at you right <laughs> And so um, that uh, that adds that element of reprisal, and it's uh, it's actually proportional too. So um, so it's actually a pretty cool way of doing it. Here, let me. Holy crap! I see. I can see that uh, the old stuff is coming up. I wonder what that's going to do to me if that's going to make a, a bigger mess. But again, you know, like it doesn't really matter because um, I don't mind it being messy. But it was something that I wasn't expecting. So there's different types of nukes in the game. Like you've got your, your ICBMs and they're your intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now they're the most, the most powerful of the nukes that you got. So, 
what happens when you drop a nuke is that, uh, here, let me just grab another one. What happens when you drop one is that, um, like into a territory, then you're going to roll a six sided dice and you're going to take off, um, whatever that number says. And then depending on the type of nuke, like a, if you're in this case, an ICBM, then the, that type of nuke will give you a plus two. So let's say you roll a three plus two is five. So now the other guy, the people who got the nuke dropped on them, they have to take off uh, that many units, right? Like uh, three plus two, they got to take off five units. So then the other thing that happens is that they have to, uh, then you roll the six sided dice again. And again, it's plus two for an ICBM and they will lose that much money, but they can't lose more money than the territory is worth. So, um, you know, like, so that's capped. Now you can also drop more than one nuke in a territory. And that's why you don't want to pile all, you, all of your units into one territory. Like let's say you're the Pacific faction and you're surrounded by the Caliphate and, and the Chinese, right? So, you know, like you just pile all your dudes on um, India and, uh, you know, like uh, it looks like you're okay. But all they got to do is drop two or three or four nukes on you and you've lost everything, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, probably half the units that you have on the board, you just lost because you put all, all of your eggs into that one basket, right? So I don't think that that's a good strategy. I haven't played the game yet, but it just seems to me that's not going to be the right way to play it. Um, anyway, that's the ICBM. The IRBM, which is the in Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile, uh, like the ICBM goes eight spaces. So you can pretty much hit anything on the board from where you are almost right um, and then the IRBM is uh, intermediate range ballistic missile so it can go um, it can go four spaces and it's uh, it's a plus zero uh, for the general effect the general effect is you know what you're rolling that six-sided dice and everything so you're going to get that six-sided dice but you're not going to add anything to it so the ICBM is going to be that much powerful right uh, more powerful. But I mean, if you're dropping two IRBMs, then, you know, that's <laughs> still pretty powerful. Even one's pretty powerful. Um, anyway, uh, so that's the IRBM. Then you've got the SLBM, and that's a sub-launch uh, ballistic missile. Now, that sub that I showed you earlier, uh, that ballistic missile sub, that's what those subs shoot is the SLBMs. Um, and uh, they give you they give you the chips in the arsenal, but I've kind of been kind of thinking about it. Like, I'm not sure too sure that you're going to need to use those chips because once that sub shoots off one ballistic missile, that sub is done for the rest of the game, right? So um, you might as well just put the sub on the board and not worry about putting that chip in your arsenal. And then um, once you shoot that sub, then then you're done with that one, right? Seems to me anyway. <laughs> anyway, that one is plus one. So same thing, you can use uh, that and you, you do the general effect thing and and uh, you roll the dice and, and you only add one to it. So that's more powerful than um, an IRBM, but less powerful than an ICBM, right? Um, now you can use these like that, like I just said, against the territory or you can use it against a base and that will automatically damage a base. Like you don't have to roll any dice after that. Uh, if you've, if you've damaged, uh, uh, a base like an air base or a naval base. And of course, uh, if you're going to use a, a, a nuke against a base, then th there's gotta be a pretty good reason for you doing that. Like you want to disable their ability to do something with that base on the next turn kind of thing. Right. So, um, anyway, then they can't use their base on their next turn and then they have to pay five IPP to replace or to repair that base, uh, on their turn and then they can use it again. Right. So it's not as powerful using it that way. Uh, but now though you, you can't use nukes against 
those type of nukes against uh, naval uh, ships. Because, I mean, the ships cost a lot in this game, right? And, you know, if you could just nuke an entire navy, then, you know, there wouldn't be any navies in the game, right? But there is something called a nuclear cruise missile. Like you've got your regular cruise missiles and you've got your nuclear cruise missiles, right? And the nuclear cruise missiles... Uh, again, it's a plus zero, so you could use them to fire them from an air base into an adjacent territory, and you can use it like a regular nuke. Um, but you can also use it to, you know, to fire from anything that fires a missile. That would be uh, the air base, um, that would be the attack sub, or the ballistic missile submarine, right? You can use all of those things to fire a missile. But with the nuclear... Uh, cruise missile you can fire that against ships but you only target one ship with it um, and whatever you hit uh, if it's one of the ships that carry things then everything on that ship is hit as well and it, it, it is not going to take two hits to sink a carrier like normally it's a capital ship and it takes two hits to sink it well that's not going to happen in this case you are just going to sink that ship and everything on it so that's that's pretty powerful right because um, um, it, it costs quite a bit for those for those type of ships, right? And it costs twelve bucks each for the uh, uh, for the fighters that are on there. If it's two fighters, I mean, it could be um, it could be helicopters or drones, um, it, or it could be two fighters and a drone, right? In which case, you're really killing lots on that uh, thing. But it, it works a little different. Like, it's not a guaranteed hit. The other ones are all guaranteed hits, right? Uh, you're, you know you're going to get a hit if you drop a nuke. Um, but in the case of the naval strike, then you're, you have to roll a 12-sided dice, and you have to get a 7 or more in order to get a hit. And it's still pretty good odds. Like, you got 50-50 shot, but it's not a guarantee. And you only get so many nukes in the game. You can't buy them, right? You get what you get, and that is it. Uh, you, you're not going to build any nukes throughout the game. And so, you need to use them. You need to be pretty sure of them. But, like I said, though, I mean, you could really kill a lot with them. Uh, if, you, if you're going after that, or even if you're going after um, the helicopter landing thing, right? Uh, you could kill two ground units plus um, plus an air unit plus a drone on one of those things if it was fully loaded, right? So that's pretty uh, that's pretty powerful as well. Anyway, so that's a way that you can use the nuclear one. And is that it? Um, well, there's hunting the ballistic missile subs, like those uh, subs that I showed you. So the only way you can hunt them like they can move two spaces to try to get away. They, they fire six spaces. Like uh, So they've got really good range on those things, right? Um, but uh, you can kill them, but it's hard to kill them. The only thing you can use for that is an attack submarine. And it can only kill it on a one. Like it has to roll a one in order to get it, right? So it's not so easy to kill one of those. I'm not going all the way down. Like you can see, there's still some part down at the bottom here. That is, uh, that's the base. Whereas the, the part that, uh, the ring that I'm doing on top, that's the rolling explosion, right? Like that's the, the lead end of the, the explosion. So I, I did paint these other ones, but I painted them in a, you know, like a light, light brown, and you can barely see it. I don't know, might want to paint them in a different color. The one thing I didn't mention, you see the, these are white, they actually come gray. I spray painted them with a white um, uh, base coat, right? So that uh, the paint would adhere better. Anyway, and I used white because uh, they're going to be white anyway, right? The explosion's going, or the smoke is going to be mostly white. I tried to put elements of black and gray into it, but like I said, it was, it was too busy. There was too many colors going on, and it, it just looked dotty, right? It'd be different if you could, 
if you could paint like Bob Ross, right? <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> A happy mistake. <laughs> and that uh, applicator also added a little bit of texture. Like it's not so smooth, right? So that's exactly what I was looking for. Put a little bit of highlights in there with the yellow. I think it'll turn out good. Anyway, I'll finish these off and I'll come back later. Okay, so I've done that. Now, take a look at this stuff. It's just gross in here, right? Um, it's not really like it's... it's uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not what I would use to try to paint something nice with it because the paint has been kind of dried a little bit. Like it's not dry and hard yet, it's kind of just glommy. Um, so this is either going to be the best or worst idea I've had all day. And I thought about this, you know, like ahead of time, thinking about what I want to do. So I don't want to paint the mushroom clouds. What I, like I, what I want them to do is I want them to look a bit of chaotic as well, right? So let's start with the first one we did there. Now, I'm gonna try two things. Unless uh, the first one works, then I'm only gonna try one. So what I'm gonna use is a sponge, and I've got this thing here. You know what, let's, uh, let's cut that sponge off, because I don't want the point on it. There we go. I like that better. Okay, so let's dip this sponge in here. Well, you know what? Looks like I don't have enough in there. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to have enough to do this. Try to rub that off. So I don't want to paint it like that. I, I kind of moved it along over here. I kind of painted it there. This is more what I'm looking for here, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing with the white all around it later, right? Uh, so that you just get a little bit of the orange coming through. So really what you're looking at is the smoke, but you're also looking at a little bit of the fire explosion through the smoke. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So let's do that. I don't think I'm going to be able to use this stuff without putting more in. So the other thing I thought about doing is using the paper towel um, instead of using this thing here, right? The sponge. Looks like I got a little bit more over here. Maybe we can do one more here. So let's try this out. Do it all around here first. Yeah, that actually looks a little bit better. That's actually more about what I was looking for. See that? And then I'm going to do the white so that it doesn't look so orange, right? Hmm, do I have any more here? I might have to mix up a little bit more. Do you remember what the formula was? Pinch of this and a dash of that. Anyway, so you get the idea. I'll mix up some more and I'll finish this off. And I'll have you back in, in a little while. Okay, so this is actually doing pretty well. I think this came out slightly oranger than the, than the other stuff. But that's okay though, I, I don't mind that. Um, but you can see there that I've done quite a few. Um, now I know I told you that... Uh, Panzer King and I were going to play the game last weekend. That was our intention to do that, but uh, then something else came up. Um, you might remember my granddaughter, Callie. She's nine years old. She's been in a few of my videos, rolling the dice when we do contests, right? Uh, that little girl. Anyway, so she came over to, or I got a call from her daycare last Thursday, so just before last weekend. And they said, could you come and pick up Callie? She's sick. And uh, that was kind of a bad sign because we knew that a couple of our kids in her class had uh, been tested positive for coronavirus. So I went to pick her up and 
made sure she had a mask on and I had a mask on and brought her to my house and took her straight to her room like she has a room for when she stays over here and uh, did, she didn't touch anything and she went in the room there and, and it was only for a couple of hours because uh, her mom got off work two hours later. She was supposed to spend the night here because it was a pro D day the next day, but uh, that was not going to happen. Like you could tell she was really quite sick, right? Um, anyway, so she left here. Uh, again, didn't touch anything on the way out, wore a mask the whole time. I wore a mask the whole time. Her mom was wearing a mask and and uh, and she went home and then I aired the place out and, and I uh, disinfected. Like she did have to use the bathroom on the way out, so I went in and disinfected that. Um, anyway, uh, she uh, she got tested the next day. Turned out she was positive for coronavirus. So, um, because of the nature of my exposure, like we checked into it and everything, and I I didn't have to quarantine. I just had to self monitor for I think it's ten days or something. But, um, you know, like I, I, if I was working or something, that'd be a different story, but I didn't have to work and I didn't have to go anywhere really. Um, I just got groceries and so, um, I just stayed home and I told James, uh, um, sorry, but we can't play this weekend. Um, and I told him why, and you know, I, there, there's no way I was going to put him and his family at risk like that. There was just no need to we can wait a week or two to play our game. And uh, so we we postponed the game. And I just went out yesterday for the first time. Today is Saturday. I went out on Friday. Uh, like I, I waited eight days uh, and I didn't get any symptoms or anything. And she was doing pretty well, actually. Like after about three or four days, she had no symptoms whatsoever. <laughs> She's been locked in her room. Not locked, but you know what I mean, stuck in her room because uh, she has a mom and a three-year-old sister that lives with her. And so she had to stay in her room. And I call her every day. She's she's on Messenger Kids, so we we do a video call every day. And and uh, But she's getting pretty bored. And midnight tonight, she gets sprung. So uh, And plus, her, her mom and her sister went and got tested yesterday. And, and they tested negative, so that's a good thing. So uh, she's doing well, and... Uh, uh, anyway, that's why we didn't get to play that game. Okay, so I've done all that. And I also did these, uh, the ones that I showed you that I, had, I thought had too many colors on them. I just uh, did it lightly with the, the red like I had done with the others. Just to, uh, just to cover that up a little bit. Like it was just so prominent, right? So I'm going to go over that with white as well. Um, so I did the same thing. I cut off one of these things. <laughs> I use these uh, like from pill bottles. I thought, hey, that'd work good for mixing paints in if I ever if I ever decide to do that. So I've been saving them for I don't know a long time. Anyway, let's put some white in there. Normally, if I'm just using a brush, I just tip the lid upside down and and do it out of there. But because I'm using it to wipe with this thing, um, I want to uh, be able to dip it in something, right? So. Uh, I think we're ready to go here. You do need some paper towel because you don't want to, you don't want it to be too thick, right? So like there's, that's just way too much on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab it off on the paper towel a little bit. Again, don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> just thought I'd try. And then I'm going to do the underside first because that also gets some of it off, right? Um, like that's where it comes off thick is, is when you first start doing it. but that will do the least amount of damage. And let's just try. I think I want more white than I have red, but I don't want it to be solid anywhere. You know what I mean? You know what, if I make it thicker, like like in spots, kind of looks like a puffy cloud, maybe, I don't know. 
Just trying different things, right? So, what do you think? No. Hmm. Not so sure. Let's let it dry and see what we think after that. Try the next one. So this is the first one where I got chunks and stuff in it. Let's see that how that turns out. Okay. All right. Looks like I have it on a little thicker on the sponge this time. We'll see how that turns out though. Maybe we like it better, right? So, it's almost like I didn't paint it red, but there's a little bit there coming through. So that's a, that's, that's not too bad. Like it does have that texture to it that um, that I got from having dipped the, the sponge into the messy stuff. I don't know if you can tell uh, on the video, but I can tell it actually looks kind of cool. Anyway, on to the next one. Okay. Another thing I could try doing is like maybe do the same thing with a bit of gray or black. That's how I got myself into trouble before though, as I tried to do too many different colors. But if I just did really, really lightly with the gray, maybe, I don't know. Could try it on one of them. Right. So there. That's a little bit in between the two. I kind of like that one. A bit too much right there. I like that one. I think I'm still going to have to put some yellow or something underneath there. I don't know. We'll see once it dries. Anyway, that's where we're at here. So I'll bring you back when it's time to do the next stage. Okay. So that actually turned out pretty good. I really like that. You know what turned out the best though was those first ones, the ones with too much color in them. Like after I I did that uh, sponging with the red and then sponging with the white afterwards, I think that looks really cool. That's more the look I was going for when I did that, but the, the dots were just a little too dotty, you know what I mean? Whereas this, everything is kind of washed out, right? It's kind of faded. So that's why I like that so much. And what, what's also neat is that when I put the, the white on, it um, it looked like I had too much on. But as like things started to dry, as, as we're going along here, then more and more red started to come out of them, right? Like this one, I thought I had way too much white on it. But the red is, you know, after the white's dried a bit, the red has come out a lot more. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Anyway, um, so because I like this more, I'm wondering if maybe I should try a little bit of gray on there. Like just a touch, right? Just throw in a, just a touch of it. Just, you know, make it look a little darker, you know, like a, a little more sinister. I don't know. Um, it seems to me, though, that uh, the mushroom clouds were really white. And, you know, like you might be able to see a bit of the explosion underneath. And that's the effect that I've got right now. I still haven't done anything with the under part of them. But you know what? It looks pretty good, though. Like, I don't know that I need to, right? As I look at the two of them, uh, you know, I think maybe it does look a little bit better with a bit of the yellow in it. Just a little bit, right? Anyway, that's what it looks like at this stage. So what I've done here, I've uh, I put the gray in, just a little bit of gray in with um, what was left of the white in there, which was hardly any. It was just the dregs at the bottom, 
just to lighten up the gray a bit. And I've got the, the white thing here. Let me just put that in there. Let's just try one of them, see what happens. We'll take most of it off first. Take the first one, which should be dry enough now. Try it on the bottom. Like we're just gonna put a little bit on. Let's see. Yeah, it does look a little dirtier. Hmm. A little bit less on yeah if you just put a little bit on I don't know if you can tell but it actually looks a little bit better a little bit more contrast yeah that uh, that looks cool. I think what I want to do though is throw a touch more white on. Like just to like the the gray, I just wanted like little hints of it in there. Whereas this is more like a little bit covered in gray, right? So let's do a really, really thin of white now. So again, doing the gray inside or the white inside the gray there. Getting some of it off, and then in fact, maybe I'll just go along the tops of them like this. Like I have the whites on top of it. Like I said, it's not it doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to be a bit chaotic, or at least I do anyway. There we go. Let's look at that. Oh yeah. Every step of the way made it look a little bit better. I think if I kept going, then I'll go too far. That's kind of what I did on those first ones there. I thought, ooh, this is starting to look good. And then, and then I went too far, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, where is this? Still though, I, I think I like the original ones better where it had a little bit of black and stuff in it, but that's okay though. I mean, they're, they're barely noticeable from one to the other. Uh, this one here, I think maybe looks the best. It's just got a hint, a bit of black in it. It's kind of cool. Anyway, um, um, that's about what I want to show you. You know what? I'll finish these off and then I'll, I'll bring you back uh, and then we'll uh, take a look at them at the end. Okay, so they're done. Um, I just, uh, I put a little bit of yellow in there and, uh, and I painted the bases black. Before I had the bases painted a very light brown and and you couldn't even tell they were painted because it was too close to the red color. So let's just take a little closer look at that. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see the base down there is black. And it's because the, the, the cloud there, there we go, the shadow. So you see what I mean there by painting a little bit of yellow in there. It's kind of like uh, the bright light inside of, of an explosion, right? A little bit of a combination and pretty chaotic too like there's nothing there's nothing standard about it and you can see how it's kind of rough and bumpy in there that's because i was using that makeup applicator um i wanted it to look messy like that but i think they look really good i really like the way that they've turned out um i did uh i put a little bit of gray on and then i um I was a little unhappy. I thought they were too gray. So I put a little bit of white on. So you can see a little bit of gray there. That's good. You know, just a little bit here or there. And then the white back on top, which 
got rid of a lot of the gray so that there would only be a tiny bit. Like it's hard to just put a tiny bit on, you know what I mean? Now this one here, you can see it's got a little bit more red, but that's okay, like they don't need to be exactly the same as each other. You can see a bit of gray in there. Anyway, cool. I really like the way they turned out. I did drop one though, when I was putting the finishing coat on. Like it's a clear coat, normally I would put a satin one on so that it wouldn't be shiny, but I kind of wanted these things to be a little bit shiny because, you know, like they're they're supposed to stand out. They're, um, you know, they're supposed to glow, right? So I put a, a gloss coat on. So there you can see a couple of them. And uh, it, uh, that's why it shows up on the gray. And then over here, there's one in China. I got one in Japan up there. And one up there in Russia. Um, you remember I was telling you about the ballistic submarines, ballistic missile submarines. So here they are. There's there's the yellow one there. There's a couple of red ones there. Now this isn't like this is all the opening setup except for you see these ballistic submarines and the drones. With the ballistic submarines and the drones, you you get a certain number of them and you can put them anywhere on the board. Uh, like the ballistic missile submarines can go anywhere, but the drones have to go uh, in your own in one of your territories, right? Or on one of your ships. Like they can either be on uh, the carrier or they can be on the LHDs, right? So you can place them there. But because we haven't started playing yet, I didn't bother placing them anywhere. And then you see over there, there's a couple of blue ones there. Uh, ballistic missile submarines and their drones are sitting in Spain. And there's the four American ones over there in the Gulf of Mexico. And the German, or sorry, German, <laughs> the Russian ones are way up there at the top there. Yeah. Anyway, so when, before the game begins, then you'll just place those around the board wherever you want them. And I'm, I'm not, I don't feel too bad that I broke one of these because, um, like all I did was drop it and the top broke off and I could have glued it on, but I already had more than I need. Like I had a dozen. I bought two packs of five and I already had two uh, previously. So I, I think at the very, very most, you're probably going to need 10 because uh, they only go on the board for one turn, right? So let's say you nuke five different territories. That's a lot, right? Well, then the other guy gets to nuke five territories. So that's 10. And uh, and then at the end of the round, they come off again. So it, um, they don't accumulate on the board, right? So I think 10 will be plenty. And I have 11. <laughs> so I wasn't about to glue that one. I just picked it up and threw it in the garbage. Anyway, so uh, that's, that's the nukes in this game. And uh, I'll go edit this video now. I actually didn't pause anything. So it went on for like an hour or so and, and uh, or more however long it took me to paint and so now I got to go cut it out. I wasn't talking or anything through a lot of it but anyway um, hopefully we'll get to playing uh, next weekend. This is Saturday today. Um, I'm hoping to play next weekend but you know I'm getting really antsy to play this game so I think what I might do this week I, I don't really have too much going on this week uh, for other things so if I get some time I think what I'll do is I'll start playing a solo game and film that. Uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. I, I really enjoyed watching the turns that Admiral Seabass played, but I've done some how-to videos and um, the rule book isn't really that big. Like I could go through and do each little fine little detail, but I think that with the videos that I already have and then showing you some gameplay that you'll pick up the game, it really doesn't look that difficult. Like. Before I started reading it, I thought, oh, I guess I got to learn how to play this. And <laughs> I read it twice and then I watched a couple of Admiral Seabass's videos. I think I pretty much got it now. It's just a matter of the finer points like, oh, do I do this or that? You know, like I uh, pretty much know how to play the game already. It's it's not a really difficult game to play, but it looks really interesting. Like there's a, a lot of different ways you can do the strategy. And so that's what I'm looking for is is uh, is to find out how it plays out because it does look very interesting in, in the mechanics. So anyway, that's the nuke video. Take care everyone. General Hangar Dave out.